just tap settings and then it'll pull down your settings menu tap more and then you get the real settings here now you should see device in this list of settings you want to just tap on device which is located right here below Kindle keyboard so tap device and then you'll see a couple of different options here you want to take note of allow installation of applications from unknown sources make sure that that is turned on it is by default set to off. So just make sure that it's set to own and then we can get right to the rooting process. Now this is my first time doing this. It is a little lengthy so just bear with me here. You first want to go to the Android SDK website and download the latest Android SDK for Windows, the uh, executable file, the exe. So just go ahead and save that. I've already actually saved it as you can see here on my desktop. There it is. So once you have it on your desktop saved, just double click it to load the Android SDK tool setup wizard. Then click next and then it does rely on the Java SE development kit. If you don't have that, it'll give you a link to download that. You probably don't have it if you've never done this before, but if you do, you should be good to go. Uh, so go ahead and click next. And once you click next, you should see the destination folder. I like to change this just for ease of use. I like to change this to just C colon backslash Android. Um, so that way you can just access it quickly from the command prompt instead of typing that full path there. So just C colon backslash Android with a capital A. If you do that, you'll be able to follow this tutorial just fine. So click next, and then you should just go ahead and click install. It'll go through the installation, which is doesn't take long at all. And then just click finish. Make sure start SDK manager is checked. And once you click finish, you'll see a command prompt open up, and then you'll see the SDK manager. It'll pull in all this stuff from the repository. Um, now since the Kindle Fire is an Android 2.3 gingerbread device. I just unchecked Android 4.0. There's no need to have that. Um, and then you want to go down here and check Android 2.33. And then make sure also Google USB driver package is checked as well. And then click on install six packages. And that'll, uh, once you click install, it'll install the Android SDK. You're going to need this in order to root your device. Uh, using this tutorial here. So this will just take a little bit. It'll go ahead and pull all those files down to your local computer and it'll place them in the directory that we created, the C colon backslash Android with a capital A. So this takes just a few seconds here. Won't wait much longer. One thing you need to note is that this does not install the USB driver. We're going to have to go back and make sure to install that ourselves here in just a second. So that'll just load up here and all those error messages. If you get this little pop-up error right here that should come up right there, you can just hit yes. If you've already had the SDK installed before, chances are you'll get that. So just click on yes there, and it looks like everything has succeeded. All packages are done downloading. Click close. Now you want to take note, like I was saying, you want to make sure that the 2.33 is installed, but notice the USB driver package still shows not installed. You need to install that one package you have to select accept and then click install and it'll go through and install the USB driver package. You will definitely need this. So take um, take note that you need to make sure that is installed and is revision four. Now what you want to do is go to your start menu, type C colon backslash. All right. And then once you go to C colon backslash, you should see Android under the C drive and go to extras and then click on Google and then click on USB driver and then you will see Android underscore win USB. You want to right click on that and you want to select open with and then select notepad to open that with. Now you're going to see a lot of information in here. You want to just take note of two things. You want to take note of this right here which is the x86 and this here which is the AMD 64. So just hit enter right after that and you want to paste this information for the Kindle Fire um, INF information. Um, and you want to do the same thing under the 64. This is just the driver for the Kindle Fire so that the Windows platform will recognize the Kindle Fire and allow you to install the driver. So just go ahead and click Save. You'll find this in the description. You can copy and paste it from the description of the video. Next, you want to clear out the address bar and you want to type in percent sign and then user profile in all caps and then percent sign again and then hit enter. That'll take you to your default user profile and then we will need to do something else. We need to go to organize, we need to go to folders and search options and then go to the view tab and then make sure we have show hidden files and folders enabled and then click apply there and then click OK. 
Now you should see the Android folder with the period in front of it. It is a hidden folder. And then you should see USB ADB inside of that. This will not be there by default, I don't believe. So I have a link where you can download this and place this right there in your default user profile. Um, and then you should see this particular value. It is 0x1949. Make sure it is exactly like that. Make sure you save it. Uh, again, you should find the download link for that particular folder in the description of the video. So once you have that taken care of, that's really the hard part. Uh, getting those two things set up, your driver and then that value in the Android folder, the hidden folder there under user profiles. You want to go to device manager now, like I just did, and you want to go to hardware and sound and then click on device manager. Now we're going to install the Kindle Fire firm or the Kindle Fire driver for the Windows platform. So make sure your Kindle Fire is plugged in. You're going to need a USB micro cable to plug that in. I'm just using a BlackBerry cable. Um, you can find those on Amazon. Once you do that, you'll notice that it should find Kindle Fire, but it's going to be under other devices on your device manager. It's easy to fix this. Just right click on the Kindle Fire, select update driver software, and then select browse my computer for driver software. And then you want to make sure include subfolders is checked. Make sure that is checked. And then you're going to put the path here. So just go ahead and browse. We're going to find our path. It's under computer. Remember C and then under Android. Make sure you select that and then select extras and then select Google. Now this will find the updated edited INF file that we just edited and added all the Kindle Fire verbiage to it. And this will allow you to install the driver for the Kindle Fire. So once you have verified that if the location is correct, click next. It'll say Windows can't verify the publisher of this driver software. That's okay. Select install this driver software anyway. It'll install the driver software and it'll just be like a generic Android phone device. You'll see it come up here in just a second here. And we're almost done. It's the Android Composite ADB interface. So that is important to make sure that it installed successfully. Click close and verify that it's there under Android phone. You can close out of device manager now and we're done with device manager. So just close that out. Now the fun part. Let's go to start menu again. Um, and then you want to open up your command prompt. So just go to start CMD and then drag your command prompt into view there. And now we're going to go CD backslash to go to your root directory, then CD space Android with a capital A, and then CD space platform dash tools, and then enter, and then ADB kill dash server, and then enter. And now again, you want to type in ADB, ADB space, and then devices, and then enter. And then it's going to say daemon not running, starting it now on port 5037, and list of devices attached. There is your device. So ADB is now working. You can now actually root your device. So this was really the hard part, just getting to this point. Now here's the easy part, just rooting the extract all to your desktop and then it'll extract that. And then you should see super one click, double click on super one click and that'll load up the rooting. I guess you could say the rooting program. Like I said, I'm not a rooting expert. This is my first time actually doing it, but let's go ahead and open that up. And then you should see root here. Now you just want to click on root and we should be good to go. So I'm going to close everything out behind me and then click on root and it'll start the rooting process. So it's killing the server and you can see all this information. I'm still learning what all this means, but it is definitely rooting our device. So I know there was a lot of steps, but this is it folks. This is how you root your Kindle Fire just a day after it has been released to the public. It's already rooted and we can install some third party applications. We can do a lot of stuff now that the device is rooted. I'm going to have more videos coming up soon to show you how to do all the cool stuff that rooting allows you to do. It's sort of the equivalent to jailbreaking your phone on an iOS device, on an iPhone, etc. Uh, you can just click yes on BusyBox was not found. Would you like to install it? Just go ahead and click yes there. And then you should see uh, root install has completed. Would you like to run a test? Click yes. Uh, super user command will now be sent to your phone. It's not a phone, but we know that your device has been rooted. Would you like to donate? You can donate if you choose to do so. All right. And then that's it, folks. That is how you root your Kindle Fire. Like I said, we'll be back with a lot more tutorials that show you how to do all the cool stuff that you can do by means of the root, like installing third party applications, things like that. Let